In part A, we are asked to calculate the impulse delivered to the volleyball. And in order to calculate that impulse, we can use the following terrifying looking equation. We can see that the impulse is equal to many things, but the most important thing that it's going to equal for part A is this quantity right here. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to need the mass, the final velocity, and the initial velocity. Now, the mass is directly given right here in the problem, and then the speeds are given as well. But we have to be careful about translating those speeds into the correct velocities. And so to do that, we're going to draw a picture. So here is the picture down here. And what we've done is, even though the question says that the speed of the ball is 15 meters per second as it approaches the player, we have been careful to say that the initial velocity is negative 15 meters per second because what we've done is we've drawn the ball initially traveling to the left in our diagram. So we're going to make sure that we call that initial velocity negative. And then the question goes on and tells us that the ball then ends up traveling in the opposite direction with a speed of 22 meters per second. Now, since it's traveling in the opposite direction after it has been hit, we now have the vector pointing to the right, the velocity vector, that is. And since it's pointing to the right in the opposite direction, then the final velocity is going to be positive 22 meters per second. So it's very important to get those signs correct when calculating the impulse. But now that we've got it, we'll go ahead and calculate the impulse. So we can see again that the impulse will equal the mass, which was the 0 0.28 kilograms multiplied by the final velocity of positive 22 meters per second minus the mass again. We actually could have factored that mass out, but we didn't. Multiplied by the initial velocity of negative 15 meters per second. So punch this into your calculator very carefully. Notice the minus and minus here will actually make this an addition problem. But when we punch this into our calculators, we end up with an impulse of 10.4. And then as far as the units are concerned, you can either memorize them or you can look carefully at your calculational setup. You have kilograms being multiplied by meters per second. So that would be the unit of impulse as well. And so this would be the correct answer to part A of this question. We will head back up and take a look at what they want in part B. It says that the player's fist is in contact with the ball for 0.06 seconds, which of course is a time interval. What is the magnitude of the average force exerted on the player's fist? So we're looking for a force. We have a time interval. We have an impulse. If only there was an equation that related those three items together. And of course there is. This is physics. There's always an equation for it. We have it right here. The impulse will equal force times the time interval. So let's come down here. And for part B, we'll write that equation out. Since we are asked to calculate the force, it would be useful for us to solve this equation for force. So go ahead and divide both sides by the time interval delta t. The delta t's will cancel. And then we can see that this average force will simply be the impulse divided by the given time interval. We'll take the impulse that we determined in part A, the 10.4 kilograms times meters per second, and then divide that by the given time interval. I believe it was 0 0.06 seconds. It was. So we'll put that in for the time interval, and then we'll calculate this. And when we punch this in, we get about 173. And since this is force, of course, the standard unit will be in newtons. This will be the correct answer to part B.